Now most of the cars that we build here, we put air suspension on them. Things like my R33 GTR, the Aston Martin, Carmen Gear and the Volkswagen Ferrier. Now these are top level show cars and on this video we're going to show you exactly how we do it. So there's pros and cons to having hardline installs when you're talking about air suspension. Now, with my R33 GCR, it is a show car. You don't generally do hardline install for the air suspension on show cars. Now, with this one, I tried to keep everything or well, the boot as usable as possible, but showing everything off at the same time. Now, you might see some air installs that are fully in your face, taking up the whole boot, look really cool. But no matter what you're doing, whether it's air installs, brake pipes, standard copper nickel brake pipes. Pretty much the tools we use are all the same. And like we always say, it's all in the details. So whether you're just doing a daily driver install, there are ways to make your pipe work look really, really neat and show worthy. And it doesn't take that much more work. Now with a hardline air install, we don't need to generally do that on a full show car, which this is. Now, this one is quite complex and it's took a lot of figuring out before you even start bending pipes about where you put things, just so they're aesthetically pleasing. On some cars, you'd want to hide the compressors away and keep all your boot space, but not with this one. We want to show it all off and show off the hard work as well. So what we've got here, we've got the compressors up the top there, hiding all the cables as much as possible, which is why we've mounted that there. Now, there is a fuel tank that sits underneath there. So all these lines will hover just above that fuel tank. Again, hiding the fuel sender, which you can sit underneath there. This is all gonna be trimmed in leather. Cables out of the management system through a hole there. And again, exiting into the car underneath that mount there. Now all these pipes, trying to keep everything nice and clean on this one. No crazy pipes you know, spinning around or anything like that. Nice, clean, professional, you know, upmarket look to it. Now, most cars you'll see that have a hardline installed in the boot, underneath the boot where they've got those bulkhead fittings, it'll just be flexes off to the airbags and whatnot. On this, everything is on show, so we've gone to town on this and it takes a lot of forward planning. In here, of course, we've got the bulkhead fittings running through there. Then we've got hard lines running all the way through back into the tank. We've also got other ones running here through more bulkhead fittings, which go through to the air shocks on the other side. One's running through here through your front beam, which is your front suspension on these. Running straight through more bulkhead fittings into the transmission tunnel, which will be hard lined all the way through the transmission tunnel to the back again where they've just got small pieces up to the airbags exactly the same with the brake lines as well now these are all different sizes of course airlines for the airbags actually easier to make because all you do is cut the end off and they push fit into those fittings with the brake lines um, and fuel pipes they're flared that's why you need the flaring tools on those so if you're just doing an airline install it's actually easier you need less tools with the hard lines and everything like that for the brake lines, it is more complex. You need the right tools, you need adapters, you need fittings, all the rest of it, so everything is compatible and not gonna leak, which is obviously super important. So yeah, we've made things complex for us on this one, but that's the difference between bog standard car and your show car. And check this out, because this is exactly how we do it. Whenever we start any hard line install, whether doing standard brake pots, whatever, First thing to do is straighten your brake pipe. Now, we've got three 16s here and we've got three eights, which is for the fuel line. Now, with a lot of airline installs for your air suspension, you can buy it in straight lengths. So if you do have that option, buy it in your straight lengths. It negates the need for one of these, but this is one of the best tools we've ever bought. So useful, makes those pipes look professional. All right, so next up, you wanna measure how long your pipe needs to be. Now, there's a few ways of doing this. You can either get total measurements with a tape rule, roughly at this point, or if it's quite a complex curve, what I like to do is use TIG welding wire, normally aluminum welding wire, and bend it exactly as you want. You can bend it as many times as you want to get that perfect look that you want. You can then put that on your bench, measure how long that length is, and then cut your pipe to that length or slightly over. To do that, we use a pipe cutting tool. Now these are cheap, readily available, Amazon, eBay, anywhere you want, there's loads of them. This one goes from 316, probably up to about 24 mil. 
back and again, it's gonna last for years. Now I said, when I'm doing brake pipes or fuel lines, whatever, airlines, I prefer to use aluminum TIG welding wire because I can literally make the shape that I want. If I don't like it, unfold it, put the bends in different places, and I can actually picture exactly what it's gonna look like. Make sure it's not gonna interfere with anything else in the car. When we're building these cars, there's a lot going on, so it's nice to just fully picture it. If you're doing a simple install and you've just got a few 90 degree bends, 45 degree bends, whatever, you can always do that with measurements. So there's, there's always a multitude of different ways that you can do it, whatever works for you. I just type to keep it simple. After that, we're using the folders. Now this is a little folder. This is for the 3 16 or dash three brake pipes. It gives you very nice tight radiuses. I think it just gives a nice, clean, professional look. After that, we've got your more general one. Most people have seen these. This is all right. It's, it goes up to 10 mil. You can do your 3 16 brake pipes in there, but it's much more of a drawn out radius. It's not as tight as the other ones. And of course, you got these ones. Now this, most people wouldn't need these, but we've been doing quite large fuel lines on this car as well. Or again, airlines as well. This is perfect for that. So there you go. Right, so once you've made your pipe, trim it to length. Make sure you've got the perfect fitment. Trim that end off. And then depending on if you're using your dash fittings or your standard brake pipe fittings, put your fittings on the end, then it's time to flare the ends. Now with your dash fittings, you need a 37 degree flare on the end which you'll need a tool like this one for, or your standard brake pipes. Again, there's loads of different flaring tools on the market, but this is the one that we use. It's a completely different angle of flare, just to be awkward, I'm sure it is. So there you go. To do this, all you do, put your pipe in there, select your size, clamp it down, and wind that in. That puts the correct size of flare on there. Wind it out, and you're good to install it. All right, so last pipe on the variant now. It was one of the last pipes anyway, and this is the brake pipe. Now, from the body to the swing arm, that's always got to be a flexible hose, which we're gonna go braided on this, stainless steel braided. Now, along this arm, from that mount to the caliper is gonna be hard aluminium with dash three fittings. Now, it would have been way easier for us to do copper throughout, but it doesn't look show car, and this is, this is something I've always wanted to do as well. So what we've had to do is, find adapters to go from dash three to the fittings that are in the calipers. And then we've had to find adapters as well that go from the dash three to the M10 fitting, which is going to be on the flexible line. So just finding out those flare sizes and thread sizes takes time. It's easy when you know how, right? But these lines are gonna look trick. They're gonna be super straight, super nice, 45, nice tight, 90 degree bends where we need them and everything's going to look nice and parallel and straight and real show car not throwing it in like they did a standard so check this out how we're going to make this this is going to look really really nice on 180 millimeters of the line, so it's not really flexy, so I need to find a way to short them hard line, piece of flexi line, and then see what's going on. If not, I need more fittings and loops, spread them, so we've got more flexy and flexy. That makes sense. For now, it's on 100 mil, which is almost like nothing. It's just a bit more complicated than the normal brake where that is for uh, that AN or dash fitting, which is 37 degrees instead of 45. Okay. It's just more complicated. I don't know why they made this so complicated, but it's smart to see why Cannot flare this before you have this end, but if you want to take the shot, how it happened, that this ends before that line up.
And there you go, it's as easy as that. Now, joking aside, it does take a lot of planning and maybe a few mess ups to do a full hardline install. But that's how you learn. And there's a lot of planning, especially when you're building a full show car like this, where everything needs to be super neat and literally everything needs to be millimeter perfect and space constraints as well, because there's a lot going into this car. But doing a video like this also shows you guys what goes into putting all the details into a full show car like this. So hope this has been useful to you as well. Not only showing you what's going into this variant build, which is a mega, mega build, and hopefully it helps you guys to learn how we do things here. So yeah, if you like it, like, subscribe, leave a comment in the messages if you want to see more of this, and we'll see you on the next video.